Good day. Where we are really excited to start this series on uh, uh, how God is using the global Pinoy's in the global harvest. And uh, as uh, we were told that there are now more than 12 billion Filipinos living and working overseas in at least 210 countries of the world. And it's amazing how we uh, hear reports and news on how God is using them in an amazing way. And today we are so happy that we have a dear brother who is, of course, a Filipino. And uh, he hails from General Santos. Uh, he said he was born England, uh, in England, not uh, England, United Kingdom, but in Glan Sarangani in South uh, Mindanao. So we are really excited to have Pastor Ralph Garay. Well, in the U.S., they call him Pastor Ralph Garay. Uh, he is the senior church planting consultant of the State Convention of the Southern Baptist in North Carolina. And uh, we are excited uh, that he can join us uh, because God is doing amazing things in North Carolina. Uh, they, there are actually 4,500 Southern Baptist churches in that state alone of North Carolina. And it's amazing how they plant at least 100 ethnic churches every year in North Carolina. See, in the Great Commission, we are mandated to make disciples of all nations. And nations there means people group or ethnic group. And what they are doing really is in response to the Great Commission of uh, seeing that churches, uh, people are coming to Christ uh, in the different uh, ethnic groups and churches are planted to be able to uh, minister to them. And, and uh, so we are excited that he can join us and he can share with us uh, what God is doing. So briefly tell us, Pastor Ralph, what God is doing in North Carolina. Pastor Nono, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to be a part of this uh, opportunity to share what God is doing in North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina is composed of uh, 10 million uh, people in the state. And yeah, there's uh, 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 4,500 uh, churches that is part of the Baptist State Convention of North Carolina. And we are so thankful that God has given us the opportunity uh, to reach the unreached in North Carolina. There are 300 languages spoken in North Carolina, especially in the schools of North Carolina, representing 300 languages. That means God has brought the nations in North Carolina. And we are so excited as a state convention that God gave us this opportunity to reach this nation that he has brought in this state. Wow. So just imagine uh, the mission field has come to your doorsteps. You don't even have to go where they are, but God brought them to your state so that you can reach them with the gospel. Now, we, we, we were told that you plant at least 100 churches among them. Can you tell us, uh, like, how do you cast the vision to the 4,500 churches? And, uh, you know, what do you tell them so that they are responding uh, to the challenge of planting churches? Annually, we have what we call uh, an annual session or annual celebration of these Southern Baptist churches. And part of the celebration is we cast the vision uh, about the lostness of North Carolina and how many millions more we need to reach the gospel, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. At least there's 5.6 million lost people in North Carolina. So we just share that information and also we share where are these uh, pockets of lostness in, in the state. And so we have identified like 250 pockets of lostness uh, in, our, uh, in our organization and we have identified uh, like uh, where these are and also we can provide information what kind of uh, demographics that will help these churches as far as they, as they pray and as they consider to uh, partner with us in reaching these communities with the gospel of Jesus Christ through church planting. Wow, so uh, that is really exciting you know, how, how you cast the vision and and how you have those packets you, you said uh, that you can present and all those information so that people, uh, churches you would, would be able to, to choose, you know, uh, what their passion is or what nations, uh, you know, is God leading them to, to plant churches. Now, uh, how about the resources? Because, see, when you, you plant churches, you need resources. Can you share us how you mobilize resources within North Carolina? 
uh, so that you are able to plant the, the churches that God would want you to plant in a year? Yeah. In North Carolina, we divide the state uh, uh, among, uh, with 82 association of churches. Association of churches, uh, these are like family of churches in different regions. And so this association of churches, they work together in their churches, in their association, and then they talk about how they can reach their uh, pockets of lostness in their association. And then uh, we come in partner with this association of churches uh, by providing training, uh, training to the partner churches on how to reach their community. And also one thing, we also provide training for the church planters that they have identified uh, to work in reaching out those community. And another thing, we also partner in funding that uh, church planter. So uh, through the contribution, what we call, uh, we call this cooperative program, uh, through a monthly mission contribution that churches give, we're able to provide financial support you know, to the church planter. So we provide training, we provide funding, and also we provide mentoring and coaching. So that's why it's very important for us to work with churches because churches, uh, through their pastors and through their leaders and through the association, we can provide these resources of mentoring, coaching, uh, funding, and training, and also facility. We provide facility because these ex existing churches, uh, they open their churches uh, for uh, new, church, new church plants. Because if you are a new church plant, it's hard for you to either rent or uh, to build your own uh, church building right away. But through this association, association of churches, we can provide facilities uh, in partnership with these new churches. Wow, that's great. So, so like if you have a, a big church and you just like use it in the morning for your service or morning and evening, so in the afternoon, like you open it to, to other ethnic groups to use it. Yes, exactly. So, and there are some churches that they have uh, three or four uh, ethnic uh, churches that meets in their facility. So probably one in the gymnasium, one in the fellowship center, one in the main sanctuary. And there's even one association right now in North Carolina that host, uh, that their goal is to host like 10 churches in their facility uh, every week uh, from different ethnic groups. Wow, this is amazing, you know, how, how these churches really caught the vision of really reaching to the nations, you know, by, you know, offering your facilities to be used so that churches from among these ethnic groups will be planted. Well, uh, wow, uh, we believe that uh, our hearers here and, and those that are watching uh, will really learn from this. And this is really what we call partnership or, or collaboration. Uh, and uh, we actually we need more of this uh, if we want to see uh, more churches planted. Now uh, another question, like how would you identify like uh, a nation or a people group uh, or this packet you said, and how would you know that they are ready and it's like the right time you know to plant uh, churches among them? Yeah, what we discover is that uh, one thing we we realize as we look back is that there's already an ongoing meeting among these people group. You know, we, we're, we don't necessarily start the meeting, but there's already an ongoing meeting because probably from where they came from, there's someone who migrated in, in one of the cities or in the state of North Carolina that has been trained in Bible school or any uh, Bible training. And he was a pastor back there in their country or in a refugee camp. And then when they came to North Carolina, uh, they start sharing the gospel among their people group and start doing Bible study. And then they would uh, contact us uh, through the local association or through our office in the state convention. And then when uh, they contact us, we would initiate a meeting with them to get to know them and you know just some information about their beliefs, their backgrounds, and also... Uh, the needs that they have, and how can we help them? How can we, we partner with them? So um, most of the time, that's how you know, our ethnic churches uh, would start. And we just come in, resource them, help them with training, and also help them with uh, the transition that they're going through 
in this new country and new system because there's so many things that a new church, especially from an ethnic group uh, background, that they have to learn about starting a church in the United States of America. And that's where our mission organization comes in, help them, because we also partner them with a local church that would disciple them, especially, you know, how to engage their, uh, not just their own ethnic group, but also their community, so that they can also share the gospel of Jesus Christ, not just the people that speak their own language, but their co-workers who are coming from different ethnic backgrounds and also speak different language. Wow. Well, uh, thank you very much for sharing that. Now, just imagine here, a uh, global Pinoy used by God and being used by God even now in a very strategic position uh, to train, uh, mentor, and, and coach uh, church planters and workers that are involved in planting nations among the various nations or ethnic groups in North Carolina. Uh, uh, is there anything else that you would want uh, you know, to, to share with us that you are doing that uh, you thought would be beneficial? Yeah, one thing really that I believe have helped us in our state uh, in seeing God uh, plant churches, you know, I see plant churches, an average of 100 new churches in our state. Uh, number one is a prayer campaign. So we, we encourage churches to pray, to pray for North Carolina, to pray for the lost people. And also we um, uh, bring awareness education uh, through different uh, platforms, through our annual gathering, we have regional gathering, and also we, we meet with different churches, and uh, we uh, use our resources uh, to establish relationships with pastors, with church leaders, because we realize that relationship is very important in completing and accomplishing the Great Commission. Without friendship and partnership among brothers and sisters, in Christ, in our state, we won't be able to plant those uh, 100 churches that God allowed us to plant. But uh, through prayer, through partnership, uh, intentional friendship that we uh, intentionally develop among our partners, uh, it helps build the trust and confidence with one another. And then the resources just, you know, follow. Because if I trust you and you trust me, uh, and then God has given us resources, Oh, we are willing to invest anything that God has given us, you know, just to uh, be sure that we participate in planting of these new churches. So, and also one thing that uh, we want to ask for prayer for North Carolina and also the whole United States of America. Uh, I don't know if you've heard this already, that the United States of America is the second largest uh, mission field in the world. And the reason for that is because God has brought nations in North America, uh, people groups coming from different backgrounds, speak different languages, coming from uh, different beliefs, they are now in the United States of America and they need the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we are praying that God will raise up missionaries in the United States of America to reach these uh, people groups, but also we are praying that God will send missionaries from different parts of the world to go to the United States of America and to help us reach the unreached people groups that God has brought there. So I hope that you will be praying for us because God has brought this nation. And I'm sure God has a purpose in bringing these nations, as he stated in the scripture, that in him we live and move and have our being. And, uh, and that means, you know, it is God who determined the exact time uh, where we should live. And so we may seek him, you know, as our God. Well, uh, this is very interesting because... You know, before when you talk of reaching the nations, you have to go where they are. Yes. And many of the unreached peoples are, live in their 1040 window. But they said some of them jump out of the window yes. and they are now in the United <laughs> States. So uh, we need more workers really uh, that would want to, you know, engage in reaching these nations in the U.S. Uh, and maybe you would want to invite Filipinos that are really called. Of course, they need to be sure that they are really called to be ministering in the United States and help plant churches? Yes, I would like to invite uh, all the Filipinos in the Philippines and different parts of the world to really start praying that God will open a door for Filipinos uh, to come to the United States of America because we need, we need help. We need help in reaching the nations that God has brought in North America. And uh, also, so pray and 
Uh, and then uh, also seek that certainty that God has called you to go there. And I'm sure if you pray and God and you have that certainty God has called you, it's just a matter of time uh, when God will open the door for you. Because I believe if He if He called you to go to America, He will provide everything. You know, just like I've experienced His provision when He called me to go to America, and also the other missionaries that we work there. Uh, it's, it's almost like the same story. God called them, God opened the door for them, and God has already prepared a place for them. And not only that, God, that God has prepared a place for them, God has already prepared partners for them that they can work with to start reaching the lost in their community with the gospel and making disciples and equip leaders and disciple makers so they can send you know, these disciple makers wherever God will will call them, uh, wherever they work, like in the hospitals, in healthcare system, in schools, uh, in the police force, in their community. God's using Filipinos in different uh, aspects of society and sphere of life. And it's so amazing how God has prepared these Filipinos uh, because their churches in the Philippines has equipped them how to share the gospel, how to lead Bible studies, how to make disciples. And then when they... Uh, reach the United States of America. They just learn a little bit about the culture and then just improve their language skill. And then it's just a matter of time. They become effective witnesses for Jesus Christ there. It's amazing what God's doing there among uh, the Filipinos that He sent in the United States of America. Well, uh, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank Pastor Ralph Garay, uh, who is the Senior Church Planting Consultant of the Southern Baptist State Convention of North Carolina. And actually, besides that, uh, you know, through his able leadership, they were able to organize FIMB, you know, the Filipino International Missions Board that had been really organized with the intention to plant churches, not just in the United States, not just in uh, the Philippines, but globally. Can you tell us more about this, Pastor Ralph? Yes, uh, thank you again, uh, Pastor Nono, also for representing uh, Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches and Philippine Mission Association. Thank you so much for your great uh, presentation there, uh, sharing with us the state of church planting here and also opportunities for church planting in the Philippines. And Filipino International Mission Board is a collaboration of um, Filipino missionaries that are scattered in different parts of the world. And so we just thought, of why don't we come together uh, to celebrate what God has done and what God is doing in these countries uh, where God has placed us, where God has assigned us. And also this was also an opportunity to uh, connect with missionaries and also to encourage one another to, you know, um, persevere, to endure whatever hardships we're facing uh, until we complete uh, God's uh, great commission. So that's the whole purpose. It's a platform where we come together to celebrate and also in line with that we went to uh, different cities in the Philippines and we held multiply church planting summit uh, we we did one here in Metro Manila and in Cebu in General Santos City in Davao City and Coronadal City in partnership with uh, churches uh, in, in in these different regions so uh, I'm really glad that uh, to be part of what God has done uh, at the Philippine Baptist Theological Seminary where we have more than 240 who participated in that global summit and hearing Filipino church planters in different parts of the world sharing what they did, their struggles, their learning experiences. Uh, it was like a, a, a really good uh, learning time for everyone but also a time of rejoicing on how God is using the global Filipinos that are scattered overseas to plant churches and also for the opportunity to be with uh, you uh, in, in those uh, cities of Coronadal, General Santos, of course in Cebu, uh, we also did in, in, uh, here in Manila and, and of course yeah, in Davao and uh, with all those uh, who attended, uh, we believe that uh, it will catalyze uh, a, a church planting movement uh, in those areas because I believe it has created so much interest, 
so much uh, you know um, enthusiasm you know as they they're excited about the potential of planting churches so really appreciate uh, uh, yeah the partnership and and we look forward to more of this uh, even in the days ahead amen thank you Lord willing uh, we'll be back and we'll continue to collaborate in the near future thank you very much uh, pastor Ralph unless you have other things to say that you may want to add uh, yes uh, I just want to thank you uh, pastor Nono for what you do with uh, Philippine mission uh, mobilization uh, and also with uh, being a church planting and you know missions director you know with the Council of Evangelical Churches in the Philippines thank you so much for our partnership thank you for your prayer Thank you for what you're doing here in the Philippines in, in training, praying, mobilizing Filipinos. Uh, that God is raising up here in the Philippines and that also God is sending out in different parts of the world to be outstanding Filipino witnesses for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Pastor Ralph. Well, uh, we'd like to thank the Lord for this opportunity that we can uh, have a chat with Pastor Ralph Garay, the senior church planting consultant for the state convention of the Southern Baptist in North Carolina. And I believe we have learned a lot of things uh, that would be helpful for us as we consider planting churches, especially among the nations. Well, this would just be one of the series and uh, we look forward to, to having time uh, with others that can give us insights and, and ideas. Uh, to, uh, talking about church planting, talking about cross-cultural missions, talking about how Filipinos are engaged in the global harvest. Indeed, God is using the global Pinoys in the global harvest. To God be the glory. Thank you. Thank you very much.